So let's do some reminiscence, stimulate some memories and think about some general knowledge. Remember, you can stop the video at any time if you'd like to think about the points that come up or discuss them with somebody. So in this week in history, at the end of May in 1844, there was a revolution in communication. What do you think that might have been? What revolution in communication happened in May 1844? Well, it involved something that looked a bit like this. What do you think? Well, the first message in Morse code was transmitted on the 24th of May, 1844. That's 176 years ago. Samuel Morse developed one of the first almost instantaneous communication systems. Before Morse code, messages were still handwritten and often delivered on horseback. So messages were sent and received by sending pulses down electrified wires using an international code. The first message went from Washington to Baltimore and it read, What hath God wrought? Which is a line from Numbers in the Bible. Do you know what Morse code is made up of? Well, it's a system of dots and dashes which are tapped out on a telegraph key. They can also be flashed by lights or represented by sound. The most used letters in the alphabet only use a few symbols to represent them and the least used letters have longer combinations of dots and dashes. So for example, the most used letter in the alphabet is E and it's represented by just one single dot and the least used letter Z is a longer combination using two dashes and two dots. So this makes letters and words which are used more often quicker to send. Do you know any words or letters in Morse code? Well, one of the most well-known signals is the international distress signal. Do you know it? It's SOS and it's represented by three dots followed by three dashes and then another three dots. You can see it being used here in the film of the Titanic, A Night to Remember. Any luck? Frankfurt, 150 miles away. The Olympic says the Mount Temple's nearer. Well, there must be someone nearer still. Try sending SOS, that's the new call. And maybe the only chance you'd ever have. Do you have any personal experience of Morse code? Now, it's not widely used today, but several professions have used it. It was used for quick communication by the Navy and Air Force during the Second World War, and some radio navigational aids still identify in Morse code today. Morse code was also used by Coast Guards until quite recently, and it's still really popular amongst amateur radio enthusiasts, although you don't need to be proficient anymore to get your license. People can also use Morse code to communicate personally if they have difficulties in communicating due to health problems. For example, people can use their eyelids to communicate by using a series of long and then quick blinks to represent the dots and dashes of Morse code. Another use of telegraphs and telegrams is to celebrate big occasions like engagements, weddings or christenings. Did you ever send or receive a telegram? Now, telegrams used to be associated with bad news, for example, if somebody had died, but the post office revamped that image with their new greetings telegrams in 1935. Let's have a look at some different designs of greetings telegrams here. The words were often a bit cheeky and they were kept by people as keepsakes. Now there's another very famous telegram that gets sent out to people on their 100th birthday, and that is from 
the Queen. I wonder if you know anyone who has received one? This was a tradition which started back in 1917 with King George V and just over 20 years ago in 1999 Buckingham Palace produced a greetings card style telegram with a personalised message and a warm personal greeting from the Queen. So let's finish with some music. What do you think that the connection might be between the composer Beethoven and the Second World War? Well, the Allies used Beethoven's music as part of the V for Victory campaign. The opening notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony are three short notes and a long one. And this equates to three dots and a dash, which is the letter V in Morse code. Now, V was a symbol of resistance in the many countries which were occupied during the war, and this idea began to spread elsewhere, and the beginning of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony was used before every BBC wartime broadcast to Europe. Let's have a listen. Today is Victory in Europe Day. This was the moment we'd all been waiting for. Enormous crowds had gathered outside the house and all over the centre of London to hear the end of the war in Europe officially announced by the Prime Minister. It was at nine o'clock on VE Day that the King had broadcast his message to the people of Britain, the British Empire and the Commonwealth of Nations. Today, we give thanks to God for a great deliverance. Speaking from our empire's oldest capital city, all better, never for one moment daunted or dismayed. In Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war has been finally overcome. 